Um, I planned a, a message I was supposed to share tonight, but just two minutes ago I decided to share tomorrow instead and do something else tonight. That's good. Um, we have many pictures of what it is to be a disciple of Jesus. Before I heard about God, I thought a Christian was somebody who sat in church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And one day they die, and when they die, they will find out if they have been cheated or not. That was my idea. First time I went with somebody to a free church, a Pentecostal church. My friend who was with me, he thought that everyone was sitting white clothes in a round circle on the floor. Because we have no idea. We, have, I, we, we get ideas, but it was so far away from what is real. What do it really mean to be a disciple? What is this life? What do we mean to be led by the Holy Spirit? I was in a program, TV program some years ago on Danish TV with a very famous Muslim and a famous Jew. And it was a debate program and we were debating different things. When the program was over, I was sitting down and talking with the Muslim, and she was a politica on Danish TV and very known. And I sat down there with that Muslim, and I said, tell me about your God. Tell me about your faith. Tell me about what God is doing in your life. And she said, oh, okay, yeah, it, it, uh, yeah, it, it feels good like when, when I'm praying and going in the mosque. And, okay. Tell me more. How, how do God speak to you? Oh, it, it feels good when I'm reading the Quran and when I'm praying and going to the mosque. Okay, tell me more. How do, the, how do God's Spirit lead you? Oh, it feels good when I'm praying and, and, and reading the Quran. Okay, tell me more. How do you get dreams and vision? What is God doing in your life? Uh, it feels good when I'm praying and reading. It was the only thing she said. And one time she asked, what about you? Yeah. And, and I could tell her stories about how God had been leading, stories about dreams, it happened, to, about how the Holy Spirit, God had been speaking, of healing, of deliverance, of persecution, weird things. And there it became very, very clear for me that what she had was just a religion. We often be intimidated if we stand in front of a radical Muslim because we think they're strong, but it's religion. Nothing more than religion. Like most Christians. Because if I ask many Christians today, tell me about your faith. What do God do in your life? Oh, it feels good when I'm reading the Bible and going in the church. Tell me more. How do the Holy Spirit lead you? Oh, it feels good when I'm reading and praying and going to church. Tell me more. How do God give you dreams? What could do God do in your life? Oh, it feels good when I'm praying. It's religion. What is the difference? God is about relationship, not a religion. And we are called to have relationship with him. And I can just see there are so many things we have totally misunderstood when it comes to what is it to know God and what is it to walk by the Spirit. Some people think to walk by the Spirit is to not sin. And I would say that is correct. We should, we should not walk in the flesh. We should not live a life of sinning. I agree with that. But I can sit here and then say, I'm not sinning. I'm walking by the Spirit now. No, you are just doing nothing. Walking by the Spirit is action. You are walking you are moving. Things are happening. And I want to say that, and I'm going to talk about that tonight, also tomorrow especially. Some people have that idea. I had that idea maybe before I became a Christian. I, I, I did not know a lot. I was thinking, oh, if there's a purpose with life, God, if you are there, come and take me. I wanted to know if God was real. And then a few weeks later, kaboom, he came. The Holy Spirit came into me. I fall on the floor. I met God. My life got changed. He is real. But that 
the purpose of life was not just to find God. The purpose of God, life was to serve God. When I found him that day, 5th of April 1995, it was not time to just sit back and think that was all I found him. And then just come to church every Sunday and lift my hands and thank God the rest of my life that I have found him. No, that day it all started. It was not the end. It was the beginning. Of a life where the Bible says, we often quote Ephesians 2.8, that by we are saved by grace, we are saved through faith, not by works, so nobody has anything to boast about. So we are saved not by works, but the next verse, we are saved to good works. God has prepared for us to walk in. What do that mean? What do it mean to be saved into works God had prepared for us to walk in. Have God prepared something for us? Yes. Let's do it more personal. Have God prepared something for you? Yes. Before creation, before you thought about yourself, before you were there, God pre prepared something for us to do. And we see that very special if we look at Jesus. Because what is special with Jesus' life is that if you follow Jesus' life, you see something go again and again. And that is as it was written. Like in his life, Jesus fulfilled a lot of prophecies. Jesus fulfilled a lot of things that was prepared for him to walk in. He fulfilled a lot of things that was written down, that was prophesied. It started when he got born in Bethlehem. It was a fulfillment. Then his parents took him and fled to Egypt, as it was written. Then he came to Nazareth and lived there, as it was written. And Jesus' life, it was, life it was just like, as it was written, as it was written, as it was written, as it was written, and it was written. He came to the cross as it was written. He hung on the cross and they took his clothes and they test, uh, do diets about it and took it, divided it, or you know. As it was written, he was laying in that tomb and it was written. He rose up the third day according to scripture as it was written. So if you look at Jesus' life, there was so many things in his life he needed to fulfill. Things that was prophesied, things that was written down, he needed to do. What do the Bible then say? What do Jesus say to us? As the Father sent me, I now send you. The same way, the same way the Father sent me here on earth to do this and this and this and this, and it was written, the same way I now send you to do. Maybe not as it was written, because the Bible is already written. But let's say like that, that it was, like it was prophesied. That God had prepared for you. And what I really love with this life is that, if people ask, what am I most excited about with this life? It's, it's the whole thing of being led by the Holy Spirit. Like, being there. Because God wants me to be there. There is nothing like being in the purpose of God's plan. There is nothing like walking in the things God has prepared for us to walk in. And I know we can get so many more details in that that we have idea of. Some years ago, I remember I was sitting, I was seeing God and I was sitting home and... No, let's go further back. Some years ago, further back, 2002, that is a lot of years ago, I got a prophecy. Tom, I see you're going to go on TV and you're going to pray for the sick through TV and, and many people all over shall get healed through your prayers. And many famous people shall come to you and you should speak into the life and many shall get saved and especially one person shall be a tool for the revival God wants to send. I got that word in 2002. 
What do I do when you get a word? You prepare for it. Paul said to Timotheus, walk the walk with the, like, use the word that spoke over you with strength in them. So what did I do? I got a prophetic word. I'm going to go on TV. I'm going to pray for sick. Many shall get healed. Famous people shall come. I should speak into life and one person should be a tool for the revival. I got that in 2002. What did I do? I prepared for it. So in my prayer time at home, in my office, just me and God, I was imagining how would that look like. So I was imagining I had a TV in front of me. Okay. You who are sick. No. Okay. You who are sick. No. Okay. I will pray for you now. Put your hands there. And I will, no. Okay. Like, so I was doing that. I was praying for many sick through TV. No, through my prayer room in my office. And again, again, when I was in praying, I was preparing, like, okay, this is going to happen. In the name of Jesus, you who are sick, put hands on the sick place, and I'm praying God will heal you. And I was imagining it. I was, like, almost living in it. I believed it. Why? Because God spoke it. If God speak it, it will happen. I believed that. So I prepared for it. And then one day, a few years later, a telephone call. Hello, it's from Danish TV. Hi, can you come and be part of our program? I said, yes, if I can pray for the sick. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. Okay, thank you. I'm going to come. <laughs> and I remember still that day I came in. The biggest TV station in Denmark, non-Christian TV station, is called DR1. Okay, Danish Radio 1. TV station. Okay. And I, I remember I came in there, and when I came into this big DR in Aarhus, a big city, I was looking at that sign, and I was going in, and I thought, aha, I know what is going to happen now. God, you know what is going to happen now. They don't know it yet. <laughs> and I came in there expecting that will happen. Why? Because this is what God spoke. So I came in there, very bold. Why? Because I knew I was walking what God had prepared for me to walk in. And I was speaking and speaking and speaking, and the time came and said, yes, you have asked if you can pray for sick people, now you can do it. And the big camera came, and I was going to look into the camera and do it. And that was special, because I've been preparing for that two years. So now I was like, okay... You who are sick out there, put your hands on the sick place, and I'm going to pray. And I put my hand, and I prayed. And then I went home. The day after, my big brother called me, Tom, you're on TV. No, I was on TV yesterday. No, you're on TV today. No, it was yesterday. They are just sending in today. No, you're on TV. Many people all over the country have called in and say how they got healed to your prayer. And they're telling about it tonight. What? And I was out driving, and I needed a TV as fast as possible. So I saw McDonald's, parked the car, came in. Do you have a TV? Running to the back room, and was staying on McDonald's to see myself. <laughs> and there they said, yesterday we had that guy who was praying for the sick through TV. And actually we have got many people who have called and say how they got healed through that prayer. And one of them is Bodit from Holbeck. And then they were interviewing a woman who was sitting there and said, yeah, I could not lift my arm for 10 years. And I saw that guy and he seems nice. So I put my hands on the shoulder and before I went to bed, hey, now I can lift my arm. <laughs> and they showed that on TV and shot, suddenly many people came to us and got healed and from Norway and Sweden all over the place and a lot of things happened. So I could now say that it is written, fulfilled. This is what God wanted me to do. But was it time to lay down and do nothing? No. There was more he wanted me to do. What was there more in that prophecy? What was that? A famous person. Two years ago, Lubega contacted us, David Lubega. And when I got that phone call, I was like, in an email, I'm like, this is this. This is the prophecy. And now we got him out in the movie and so on. And it's a very strong testimony. As it is written. And I can say that with many things. Also details I often don't share. A few years ago, some years ago, I remember I was sitting home in my office. And 
the telephone call and it was a woman. Hi, Tom, can I pray for you? Yeah, and I only met her one or two times. And she said, God woke me up this night. And I've been praying for you the whole night. I didn't sleep because of it. Sorry. No. <laughs> can I pray for you now? Yes. And she started to pray for me. And she prayed and prayed. And then she started to prophesy. And I just felt God. And I was sitting there crying. <laughs> I was writing down. <laughs> And I was writing down boo, boo, long, 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 long list. And when she was finished, thank you. And I read the list. You are going to travel. You are going to Greenland. Greenland? It's cold on Greenland. How do you come to Greenland? For me, Greenland was like... Greenland. It's not a place you just drop in. Like, and I was thinking, Greenland. Yeah, Greenland and fair islands and uh, Russia, uh, South Africa, Russia and the countries over there. And, and God spoke, 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 spoke. But I knew it was God. I prayed. I love when things go fast. It's not always so fast, but this time, the day after, <laughs> I got a phone call. Hello, Tom, I've seen you on TV. Can you pray for me? Yeah, I can. And I pray for him over the telephone and he got healed in the back. And then I asked, okay, where, where are you from? And he said a name of a city I did not know. So I thought it was the other end of Denmark. So I said, oh, I don't know that. Where is that? Oh, it's on Greenland. <laughs> and I looked at my paper like, Greenland. One year later, I went to Greenland. Everything just arranged. I jumped in the plane and I came to Greenland. And I walked there, and, and that, that feeling of, this is not man organized. This is not him organized. It's not just for it to happen. This is at, as it is written, as it is prophesied. This is what God had prepared for me to walk in. And we saw amazing things in Greenland. And, and I saw people who were like, hey, you are in Greenland. I've just been seeing you and so on. I'm praying for people. People met God. And I came home for Greenland. Done that. Been there. Done that. Next place, Fair Island. And, and, some, and, and sometimes later, I think a year later, suddenly it came to me. Now it's time, Fair Island. And I felt I urged I need to go to Fair Island. So I went in, I opened my computer, and I was searching for a flight ticket. But I was not used to flying at that time, and I did not, I'm not so smart. Sorry. <laughs> so, so I did not know how, how do it work, how do I order a ticket, what program to use, and all of that. So I was like, oh, what to do? I need a ticket, but where? Fair Islands, how do I go there? And I felt like, oh, so I closed the computer and I said, I will go and pray. So I went out praying, God, thank you, because you have spoken to Fair Island. And I think it's time. I really feel it's time for me to go to Fair Islands, God. Help me. I don't know how to order the ticket. I came home for prayer and then I've got an email. Hi, Tom. Me and my husband, we are going to Fair Islands. And we saw there's cheap tickets today, and we just thought about you. Do you want to join us? Then we can order a ticket for you. <laughs> order the ticket, and they gave the ticket. And when I came to Fair Highland, it was like, it was really beautiful. I came there. I was doing a meeting. I did not know what was going on. I did not know that there was one guy at one meeting who had actually seen me on TV that day, on YouTube that day, and he came to that meeting, he was a little skeptical, but he prayed, God, if that person is real, let him come and pray for me with the Holy Spirit in the middle of the meeting. And you don't do that. But that day, under that meeting, Sonia saw him and like, can I pray for you with the Holy Spirit? And that person got filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. His name is David Mercure. He's a good friend of me now. He got saved, he got changed that day. And they started another fellowship who have led like hundreds of people to Christ. And suddenly it was something they showed on Fair Islands and a lot of things happened. Beautiful. I came home, Fair Islands. Yes. Next place, Russia, the countries over there, South Africa. Now I've been in South Africa. Now I've been in Russia. I was in Belarus, right, right Russia. I was there a few, uh, many years ago when I met God, when I got saved. 
in the beginning, before I knew all of this, I was in White Russia, Belarus. But, but I was thinking of it, and, and yesterday I was out praying here. And I was walking and praying yesterday, and I thought about some of the prophetic words I have got. And one of the words was, I should move like a big X and win cities from Christ. And I was going and praying yesterday, God, I want to be like a big X that's going to win people for Christ. And I felt God did something yesterday. And I thought about some of the things. And just this afternoon, where is my friend from Belarus? Where are you? Can you stand up? Hi. Just this afternoon, I was praying yesterday, and I thought about some of the prophecies to Russia and the countries over there, and about a big X. And just today, he came to me just a few hours ago and said, Torben, I'm from Belarus. I really need to talk to you. I've just been fasting 40 days. I'm finished on Sunday, and God spoke to me that I should come here and meet you. And I have something for you. For my father, it's an invitation to Belarus. And then he gave me a big X. Like a wooden X. And it don't make sense. But now I'm going to Russia. To Belarus. And I love it because I know it's God. I know it's what God had prepared for me to walk in. And this is what I like. The Christian life is not just going there and there and don't know anything. It's to walk in things God beforehand have prepared for us to walk in. And that is for every one of you. This is our calling. Like Jesus was sent by his father to do the will of God. We, the same way, is sent here on earth in Christ's place to obey God. And yes, we are not saved by works, but we are saved to works. God, before creation, have created us to walk in. And those things God have created you to walk in, it's only you who can walk in it. You, I cannot walk in you. I cannot obey God's calling over your life. You need to obey it. I love it. How? I'm going to talk more about that tomorrow. But one thing is that we need to live close with him. We need to have a relationship with him. We need to come to a point where we recognize God's voice. And yes, it is not easy. I don't always think it's easy. I don't think it's very, very difficult. But there is no easy solution. Pray. Fast. And then be faithful in the small things. Start with what you have. Maybe it's a small thing. Maybe it's you feel God say, go to that person and do this and this. Then we obey. Why? Because when God sees a heart of obedience, he sees there is somebody here I can use. There is somebody here who are faithful in the small things. And because they are faithful in the small things, I can put that person over more. And I would say with life, I see life is a long Bible school. Bible school is not something you just do one year or three weeks. Life is a Bible school. That day you get saved, welcome to a Bible school that's going to be the rest of your life. And very often we learn through hardship. We learn through life. I have moved a lot. We have moved a lot. I don't know a lot. Like the first 18 years, I lived one place with mom and dad. Then I met God. And the next 23 years, I lived 18 places. But when we have moved, I see again and again God's hand in. It's not just something we do. It's the Holy Spirit lead. And we have many testimonials how we got that house and how we rented that place and how we do this and how we do this. And just the last three places we have moved, four places. 
Some of you heard the story, but when I ended the pioneer school some years ago, I was sitting there on the computer. We are searching for a new place to live in Herning, our city, Herning. But we couldn't find a place and it cost a lot of money and we didn't have money and so on. And I was like, God, what to do, where to live, what to do. And suddenly God spoke to us, move to Aalborg. And I looked at my wife, we are moving to Aalborg. And I was so excited because I knew I was called. So I, instead of searching house in Herning, our city, I searched Aalborg. And suddenly there was a lot of cities. <laughs> many, many, many cities. So what to do? Let's move. We don't have any money, but that is God's problem. But when we are led by the Spirit, he, he, it's His idea. He will provide. We need to live a life where we learn to be dependent on him. If the money don't come, if it don't happen, then it's not God. Believe him, trust him. It's not easy. But I knew it was God. I went to bed. We needed 100,000 Danish crowns. That is 17,000 euro. And I went to bed and I woke up every hour. <laughs> we are moving to Albor. And then I slept again. <laughs> we are moving to Aalborg, and then I slept again. I was really excited. Next morning when I woke up, I took my telephone and I checked my bank account, and I was like, what is happening? All those numbers. <laughs> and somebody had just put 100,000 Danish crown on a bank account. There should be 1,200, but now there's 100 and 1,200. What? And I checked, and there was 100,000. So I said to my wife, now we have the money, let's go. We jump in the car, we went to Aalborg, we rented a house. And then I contacted that person. I saw he was from that area and said, uh, can we meet? And then I met him. I've never seen him before, but I love him already. <laughs> and I said, who are you? And he was fulfillment of a prophecy because it was prophesied some years before that a rich businessman in our country is going to help us. And he was a famous football player in our country who had some money, who blessed us, who had God saved to us. So Ed, it was written, one more prophecy. So he helped us, we rented a house. Then we wanted to move again, and we needed more space. So we found a neighbor house we could buy for our friends. So I talked with him and said, shall we buy it? Yes, he had the money, I have the vision, let's buy it. So he was like, let's buy it. So we decided to buy the neighbor house. But he don't want to pay full price, so he get, went down like maybe $30,000, euro. He went down. And then he called me later and said, Torben, they said no to it. They don't want to go down in price. Okay. What to do? I don't know. We really want the house. Yes. Let's just buy it. Let's just pay the full price. Okay. So he paid the full price. And they said no. I'm like, what? They didn't want to sell it. The real estate agent, he was shocked. He said he had never tried to sell a house before, and when he can sell a house, they don't want to sell it. And I remember I was in Singapore. I got a phone call. My friend said, Tom, they don't want to sell a house. It don't make sense. And I said, that's okay. God has something better. God knows what he's doing. So I opened the internet in Singapore and I said, God, what do you then have for us? And I searched and suddenly we saw like a mini hotel in Aalborg. That was like 1,000 square meters, much bigger than that one house. <gasps> and I said to him, I think this is what God wants us to do. And then we got that house. And we got that house. It was so amazing. And we got it. And then my wife said to me, hey, if we move in there, I'm, I'm going to, we are going to move the whole family. I said, no, no, we are going to stay our house. We are renting our house. We're going to stay there, but we are going to move, use it for the school. And she said, no, I know you. If we are going to have that place, I will never see you home. You'll be there all the time. <laughs> so I said, no, because I'm like practical guy. If we are moving now, we have to paint our house. We have to put the ceiling on and we are not going to get the money back. We paid. So I don't want to move already. We only lived here five months. I want to move. I don't want to move. I want to move. I don't want to move. I want... Okay, you get the picture. 
But I said, okay, let's just go and look at the new place. So we took the kids in the house, in the car, and we went to look at the new Jesus Hotel. And we came there, and the old guy, there was an old guy who was having the, he came and said, hi, welcome to your new house. And I said, no, 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 no. We already have a place. Okay, kids, this is your new house. Come, I can show you what is going to be your room. I said, no, 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 no. Listen here. We already have a place. We are going to rent this and use it for school, but we have another place. Okay, come kids. This is your school and your house. And, and maybe this is your bedroom. And girls, you can have a room there and you can have a room there. And I said, hey, 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 listen here. We are not going to stay here. We already have a place. Okay, so this is your living room. And he didn't hear me. He was like, 80 years old, but this is your room around room and room and room. And in the end, I need to be clear and say, hey, listen, old man. I did not say that. I thought that. <laughs> listen here. We have a house. We are renting this to have a school, but we already have a house. And he said, where is your house? Oh, we are renting a house there and there. Oh, I would like to live there. I'm going to move into your house and you're going to move in here. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm moving to your house. And it ended up that he actually moved into our house and we moved out. And he took all our contracts so we didn't need to paint and do the ceiling and everything and we get all our money back. God was in control. Then we have that house that Jesus sent her and it became suddenly too small so we moved another place away from the house and we had the Jesus sender. And I thought this is what God won. But then something happened. God spoke the next thing. I was in Switzerland a few years ago. And I was eating a pizza. In the middle of the pizza, a friend, he forgot he had dropped his SD card in the telephone. And he said, I need to run to find my SD card. So I thought, okay, I will run after you and help you to find it. So I run out in the middle of the pizza to find the SD card in the middle of Zurich. And suddenly five people came who had been at the Kickstarter and said, hey, it's you, Tom. Hi, hi. Just looking for something. <laughs> oh, Tom, can we just pray for you? Yeah, yeah, you can pray for me. And in the middle of the street, they start to pray and prophesy over me. And they prophesied that we should start five different centers all over the world, like a Jesus center, like a hub, where people come and get trained and get sent out. And that word become very strong. So I dare God spoke that I should start a hub. I'm going to start a hub. And I went in and continued the pizza. And then it starts working us. We need a bigger place. We need a bigger place. We need a bigger place. Then in the beginning of January this year, I was in, Hol in Norway. And I was sitting and talking with a friend. A old friend I knew many years ago. And many years ago, we had a Jesus radio together. And we sat and talked. And I said to him, hey, Ronald, come to Denmark. Let's work together. He's in Poland now as missionary. Come to Denmark. Let's work together. And then we can do a Jesus radio. And when I said that, I was surprised. In the middle of the dinner, I just... Good idea, come and do a Jesus radio. When I said that, God spoke. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do a Jesus radio. Wow, it's going to be so good. A radio, and we are going to send all over the world. And there in the middle of the dinner, I just felt God said, start a radio. And I was like, wow. So I jumped in the, in the boat, came home to Denmark. I'm going to start a radio. I came home to our Jesus center. And then I heard that there was another place, really big, big, 7,000 square meters, big uh, boarding school who have closed down. And I thought, no, I don't want that. We are living here. But suddenly I felt I needed to go out and look at it. So I went out and looked at it. And it was far from our city, Aalborg, but it was big. It was really, like, really big. Like seven, eight times as much space as we had now. Almost no money. And they renovated for four point. Five million dollars. They built some of it just eight years ago. I don't know what it all cost, but we can get it all for 700,000 euro. It don't make sense. And I saw that play, and there I was thinking, is that you, God? It's far away from Aalborg, but if you want us to be here, we can send people to that island. and We can do a lot of things. Then I came home, and a friend came to me. God gave me a dream last night. I dreamt you were on a big, big school and we were sending people to that island and you were speaking into a radio and they were sending all over the world. Do that make sense for you? <laughs> and now we move there. 
as it was written. But that was only the first of the five senders, so there's still more to do. Why do I say this? It sounds extreme, but is that not normal? Should this not be the normal Christian life? Instead of, hey, tell me about your life with God. Oh, it feels good when I'm going in church. And this is not how we are created. We are created to walk in things God has prepared for us to walk in. And the truth is, if you don't walk in it, nobody's going to do it. Because it's you who can do it. It's you God has prepared. And we don't want to be disobedient, do we? We want to be obedient to what the call God has given us. Maybe you don't know specific right now what God wants you to do. But I would like to give you a prophecy. Here it is. Take it and obey it. It starts here. You don't need more than this. Jesus at one time said, said, go and make disciples. Then go and make disciples. Jesus at one time said, do this, then do it. It starts here. If you're faithful in this, God hears you speak. And you'll be more and more and more specific while you are seeking him. But if you don't start here, you're not going to experience the rest. Understand? God, I thank you for this night. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the things you have called us to walk in. And I pray for everyone who is in this room that you will create a hunger in their life. A hunger to walk in the works you have prepared for us before creation to walk in. That we will all live a life where we can say that it is fulfilled like it has been prophesied over us. It is fulfilled like it has been written down in our words. Come with your Holy Spirit and create that hunger. And pray that there will be a new beginning for many people. In the name of Jesus, come with your Holy Spirit, God. Thank you because you're going to put your hand on us tonight. Thank you because people are going to experience freedom. They're going to experience healing. They're going to experience a new beginning with you. So come with your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. Come, Holy Spirit, God. God, I pray for the things you have laid inside of them. Let it come up. Bigger dreams, God. Nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible for the one who believes. Thank you, God, because you have greater things. Thank you because you are going to give us ears to hear what you are saying. You are going to give us eyes to see. And help us, God, to be faithful in the small things. And while we are faithful in the small things, that we will seek you by our whole heart. And we will experience how you lead us by your spirit. How you prepare things for us, God. Jesus, we love you and we thank you for what you are doing. In the name of Jesus.